Hi there. Imagine you are relaxing somewhere on the shores of Thailand. Pleasant sun, sound of waves, and warm sand. But suddenly you notice that the coastline has moved away, and in the place where the water was a minute ago, now there is only wet sand and shells. Many will not give this much thought, but in fact, you only have a few minutes left to save your life. Earthquakes and volcanic eruptions have the potential to cause a devastating tsunami. The Pacific Ocean is one of the very places where, according to statistics, 75% of volcanic eruptions and 90% of earthquakes occur in the world. A giant wave is formed when there is a sudden displacement of the ocean floor, and especially often with the instantaneous vertical ejection of one of the wings of a tectonic rupture. This causes the entire thickness of the ocean water to rise simultaneously, creating waves on the surface that diverge to the sides almost at the speed of a passenger plane, and this is more than 500 miles per hour for a minute. Wave heights can reach 100 feet or more, a truly impressive power. Therefore, if you feel some tremors while on the beach, then look for a hill as soon as possible, because the beach will soon turn into the seabed. If the sea has suddenly receded, leaving bare sand, this is an important warning sign that the tide is about to come. But frivolous vacationers often rush to collect souvenirs in the form of seashells and starfish, or take photos for Instagram, which may be their last. Also, do not rely too much on the tsunami warning from the authorities, because they may announce it with a great delay. The first thing you should do is get away from the coast towards higher elevations, hills, or mountains. Do not stop until you are at least a couple of miles from the water, or at least 100 feet above sea level. Rescuers also do not recommend using a car when fleeing, since if you try to evacuate by car, you risk getting stuck in a traffic jam, and you may be washed away by the tsunami along with your car. If it so happens that you are still trapped and cannot leave the shore, look for the nearest tall building or a special tower. This is certainly not the best solution since the structure can collapse, but if you have no other choice, look for a tall, sturdy house and climb to the very top floor or even the roof. If there are no buildings nearby, then start looking for a tall and strong tree. Try to climb as high as you can. Yes, the probability of a tsunami toppling a tree is pretty high, so only use the hideout if other options are not available. The bigger the tree, the higher it will be to possibly climb, and the chances of your survival will be greatly increased. This is how a 14-year-old boy who lived on one of the Andaman Islands survived in 2004. For 11 days, he sat on top of a tree without food or water after the terrible tsunami that struck Southeast Asia. From a medical point of view, this seems incredible, but the will to live works wonders. During the tsunami, he miraculously managed to catch and hold on to a tree branch. He heard people screaming for help and how planks and other logs were breaking, but his tree survived. A day later, the sea calmed down, but it did not recede. The tree was still deep in the water and the boy was afraid to get off the tree because he did not know if he would reach the bottom. And finally, on the 11th day, he fell from the tree. And once he hit the water, it woke him up and he realized that it was only up to his chest. The boy got out to a dry place where villagers soon found him and carried him to a nearby military base. From there, he was taken to a hospital. The doctors at the Port Blair Hospital suggested that he was in shock, which caused his body to be in a trance state, which in turn made his metabolism slow down, and this is what allowed him to stay in the tree for so long without food or water. Another survivor of the terrible tsunami was 20-year-old Brazil Shahaputra. He was found by a South African merchant ship and a couple of hundred miles west of the coast. A huge wave caught the guy at the moment when he was working on a construction of a mosque. I saw how the water immediately carried away my family. Then I noticed a tree uprooted and clung to it. He said this after he regained consciousness in the hospital. A wave threw this guy into the open ocean. For eight days, he ate coconuts and bags of instant noodles, which were nailed to a tree. On the eighth day when the forces were already leaving, 
He was noticed by one of the sailors passing by the South African ship. As the ship's skipper later stated, the guy was saved by a yellow t-shirt. If not for it, perhaps no one would have noticed him. Few people know, but the 1952 tsunami nearly unleashed a nuclear war. During the Soviet era, a border post was located in the city of Soverokorilsk. The islands housed Soviet military bases and strike units directed against the United States and Japan. The atmosphere in those days was tense. After the impact of the first tsunami wave, a panic telegram came from one of the warships, from which it was not clear what was happening. The wave was so strong that the leadership in Moscow urgently decided whether it was a nuclear strike and, if so, at what point to retaliate. However, one of the commanders of the Navy convinced the leadership that this was all due to the earthquake, which was felt even 200 miles from the epicenter. As in many cases at that time, they decided to classify the information. Unfortunately, the place hit by the tsunami was not rich in hills and strong trees. Only two concrete structures have survived from the city, the stadium gate and a concrete monument. Only the outskirts of Severo Kurilsk survived. How many soldiers died during the tsunami is unknown. The naval archive was declassified, but the military documents are still classified as secret. Some reports say people ran in their underwear to the hills to escape the ocean waves. The second wave was even more powerful. It demolished and smashed the whirlpool trucks, tractors, and other agriculture equipment and carried people into the icy ocean water. A little later, it became known that the tsunami was caused by an earthquake in Kamchatka. Its force was located under the seabed at a depth of about 100,000 feet. In terms of the amount of energy released, the earthquake of 1952 significantly exceeded, for example, the Ashgabat one which occurred in 1948. And if Ashgabat had a magnitude of just over 7, then Kamchatka reached almost 9. In the 20th century in northern Eurasia, it was exceptional in its strength. A huge continental zone in this place set in motion and provoked a tsunami. The largest wave was over 65 feet high. Already in 1956, an order was issued on the creation of tsunami warning services in the USSR, which is still working today. And in Suvero Korilsk, there is a memory square where the names of all those who fell in an unequal battle against the forces of nature are inscribed on a metal plate. And that's all for today. Be sure to write in the comments what you would do in the event of a tsunami. And don't forget to put like if you like this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.